He's trying to deny what he clearly said on video yesterday, but former Harper Cabinet Minister Peter McKay's comments still continue to cause a major stir in conservative circles. Speaking in front of the cameras in Washington, McKay mocked Scheer's failure to win the election and attacking the conservative leaders, or sorry, the leader's social conservative baggage as a stinking albatross. People did not want to talk about women's reproductive rights. They didn't want to talk about revisiting the issue of same-sex marriage. And yet that was thrust onto the agenda uh, and hung around Andrew Scheer's neck like a, a stinking albatross, quite frankly. And he wasn't able to deftly uh, deal with those issues when, when the opportunities arose. All right. Today, McKay tried to walk it back. He was tweeting this. I repeatedly said I support Andrew Scheer. I've worked very hard to help him in the campaign. Reports of me organizing are false. Recent comments are about our part party shortcoming on making the necessary improvements with modern policies and better comms so we can win the next election. Now, we tried repeatedly to get Peter McKay and Andrew Scheer to agree to come on the show. Both declined our invitations. But let's get some insight from those who have been inside the caucus and worked with both Scheer and McKay. Former Finance Minister Joe Oliver joins us from Toronto. Mm -hmm. Former MP and leadership contestant Brad Trost joins us from Saskatoon. And it's worth noting, just to make it clear here, Brad, that you did unsuccessfully try to sue the Conservative Party for smearing your reputation. But let's move on to the current situation. Joe Oliver, you represented yes. a Toronto riding, and the Conservatives lost ground there last week, and it probably cost them a chance at forming a government. Does Andrew Scheer, in your view, own responsibility for that failure? Look, Andrew Scheer made some very significant breakthroughs, and I think it's important to acknowledge that. Uh, the Conservative Party won 240,000 more votes than the Liberals. Uh, the increase in seats uh, uh, was 22. Uh, the Liberals went down 27. But on the other hand, uh, we we didn't uh, get a plurality, which uh, a lot of uh, a lot of conservatives had hoped for, and it happened at a time when the liberal leader seemed to be fatally flawed in terms of his personal misdeeds, his broken promises, the deficits, the international embarrassment, and uh, the list mm -hmm. uh, the list goes on. So I, I think in terms of of, of Peter M McKay, uh, you know, Peter worked extremely hard for. Andrew Scheer. He wanted Andrew Scheer to win. He wanted him to be prime minister. And I think he's he's remaining a, a loyalist uh, to, to the party. But he was expressing, I think, a frustration that, that some people feel that we just couldn't uh, get it done in, the, in, this, uh, in this last election. Well, before I go to Brad, I just want to get you to clarify this. So you don't believe that that shot is any early signs of a future leadership bid by Peter McKay? Well, I, I don't uh, think that, uh, that Peter has made a decision about what he wants to do. He certainly, uh, he certainly hasn't indicated that he's, he's going to take a shot, and I think we should, we should take him at his word at this point. I mean, we need a little bit of time. We think, uh, you know, I think what, it's very important that an analysis be done. It can't be shared very widely, but it's got to be shared amongst a number of, of conservatives, and we have to make a determination, and the party uh, will do that. And we don't really Really, frankly, need advice from which we're getting a lot from from uh, liberals across the country about becoming liberal light. I mean, conservatives will make their own decisions based on their values and political realities. All right, Brad Trust. I think people would argue uh, you crowned Sheer or helped crown Sheer by bringing social conservatives to his side. Uh, what do you make of that stinking albatross uh, comment of Peter McKay's? Well, Andrew Scheer described himself as a feminist, promised to fund overseas abortions, and also promised to bring in extra legislation to back LGBTQ issues. Um, I'm not sure where the idea is that Andrew ran as a social conservative comes from. Look, he had a very difficult time answering his positions about abortion, about his past position on gay marriage, which he may or may not have changed. But that more speaks to a lack of vision on other issues, a lack of scripting to put other things forward, and is more of a symptom of, you know, weak and poor communications. Um, these were issues that were known about for two years. And had Andrew come out on one side or the other clearly, I think he could have put him to bed. But when you're indecisive, people ask you questions about something over and over and over again.
I think if I could just <laughs> add to no. that, Don, uh, you know, what we had were two leaders, one uh, sort of condemned for his, his position uh, on, on some of these issues. But, you know, in terms of, in terms of uh, the, the, the whole question of, of abortion, uh, Justin Trudeau said he personally was opposed to it, but he wouldn't impose that view on the public. And that view is absolutely identical uh, to, to Scheer's view. Trudeau got praised. Sheer got condemned. Part of it is a double mm -hmm. standard, and part of it may have been communication. I think it was. Yeah. I just clarify, Brad Trost, do you feel Sheer betrayed the social conservatives by not advocating more for those causes and, in fact, vowing to act against doing anything for those causes? Well, Andrew in the leadership race ran as a social conservative in part of the country and as a non-social conservative in other parts of the country. Um, that may have mm -hmm. worked in the leadership race. The problem is this. When it comes to the general election, questions like that have to be clarified. So, Andrew, was he or was he not a social conservative? In the leadership race, it depended upon the audience he was in front of. But politically, if you want to win an election, you need to be clear about where you stand. People often don't care as much about what you stand for. They care about whether or not you stand for something. And I think that was the fundamental problem politically that he had. Hmm, interesting. Joe Oliver, you've still got your finger on the pulse of the GTA. It, it, do you think Andrew Scheer, under the, uh, into the next election campaign, can win in 905, or do you think it's a lost cause? I won't call it a lost cause, but I think he needs to communicate very clearly what his, his stance is. Admit who he is, there's nothing to be ashamed of. I mean, we, we have uh, uh, tolerance for, for and, and uh, support for freedom of religion. Uh, people are entitled to have mm -hmm. different views. Well, what's critical is that he, he explain what they are, honestly, and say what would impact, if anything, on his, on, on his public policy. Uh, he's, he's talked about the second point. He wasn't uh, all that clear initially about, about the first point. Eventually, he got there, but uh, I, I think the, the indecision and the uncertainty uh, created a bit of a problem. So he's got a bit of an uphill uh, battle here. I don't think it's insurmountable, but it, it won't be easy. Brad Trost, I'm curious, do you think Andrew Scheer should be challenged in the spring by social conservatives, and have you heard any rumblings about a leadership challenge? I have been hearing things about people are thinking about the leadership. Um, I've had, in fact, two people who are thinking about the leadership personally call me to discuss my thoughts on the matter. Um, so I think the problem for Andrew going forward is not just that social conservatives are disappointed with him, it's that all conservatives had higher expectations. And even if people aren't thinking about a leadership challenge now, as they hear Peter McKay and others publicly muse about it, whether they say they are or not, it's going to encourage more people to jump in <laughs> And at that point, it could become a self-fulfilling prophecy and a leadership race could start whether or not uh, the party really wants one to go or not. Are you hearing anything, Joe Oliver, about leadership challenges so starting to rev the engines? No, I, I haven't. What I've heard is a lot of people very much engaged in this debate, and, and they've come out on, on both sides. And, and clearly, uh, there's a need for a breakthrough in the GTA, particularly the 905, and, and in Quebec. And so those issues, uh, in, in a way, it's, it's, it's really unfortunate, because we're debating issues where the, the parties are all in agreement, and we're not talking about issues that, that actually will impact on people where the parties are in pretty significant disagreement. So we have to get over this and we have to communicate, uh, we have to communicate uh, quite, quite clearly. And uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna find out in the next uh, a little while how that, that comes out. Uh, I, you know, this is a democratic party and uh, the, 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 the delegates will, will decide. All right, thank you both, uh, interesting discussion. Thank you.